This tutorial describes an app that was built using Fusion Tables and App Inventor 2. Let's start by looking at the finished product, the app that was built. I've got my emulator running here and I'm going to just start up the app. And here's the app running and basically it's a, an app that has been built to allow students at my school to view their schedule. So what ends up happening is that the first time they run the app, uh, they're asked to put in their name and their schedule. So we have a rotating schedule at our school, West Hill, and there are seven periods. So you would typically put in all the subjects and all your teachers. And then uh, you only do that once and you hit save. And then you would go to today's schedule. And as you can see, this is the part that uses the uh, fusion tables. And it would display your schedule uh, for today and if there are any uh, additional messages, for example, on this particular day I put in the database that school's been canceled due to bad weather, uh, it basically shows you the schedule and the message. Uh, you can also look at your schedule for any future day. So, for example, if I hit this change date feature, I can go and look at uh, another day out in the future, August 13th, to take an example, and it would load the uh, schedule for that day. And now we're going to have a look at the building blocks that were used uh, to build this app. This app actually uses three different fusion tables that work with one another. So let's have a look at these three. Uh, these are the three databases I have right here. Each one is a fusion table. And let's look, for example, at this uh, August 13th date. Now, a school is actually closed because it's summer. So the data that we're looking at here is just some test data that I plugged into the databases. Uh, so we've imagined here on uh, October, uh, sorry, August 13th, which is going to be an F day. What does that mean, an F day? And how do we know that it's an F day? So if we look at the uh, one of the main databases here, uh, the first thing that happens when we're looking up information for a specific date, we go into the main uh, calendar cycle database and we look up uh, August 13th. That's this record right over here. And we see that it's an F day and it's a normal schedule. So what does F day mean? Well, to do, figure out what F day means, we, we look in a second fusion table. And here, uh, the sequence of the periods for each type of day is defined. And the app then goes and figures out that F day basically means that it's going to be this sequence of periods that takes place, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. And we see that in the app, that is the uh, sequence of periods that's displayed. Now, in terms of the subjects for each of those periods, those are actually stored locally using a tiny database, those do not use uh, a fusion table. Okay, so uh, here uh, I'm going to just put the date back to uh, the 13th that we were looking at. And so with the combination of these fusion tables, I'm able to display the period sequence and from information on the other page, the first screen, I'm able to list the uh, subjects that take place for each of those periods. And these start and end times are, uh, can basically be found uh, by looking at the, the third uh, database here, uh, which describes the, uh, the, the start and end times for each of the, uh, each of the periods. Okay, so that's basically how the three databases work together uh, with the app. Okay, let's have a look at App Inventor and see how this functionality was uh, created. So here I've got my App Inventor open to the app, and this is the first screen that the user sees, which allows them to program in their schedule. This screen's not that interesting, it just involves a tiny DB and a notifier, and, and basically once the student types in the schedule once per semester, that information is saved locally on the device, and uh, that's basically it there. Uh, the other screen, which is much more important for us, because that's the one that uses the fusion tables, is the one that actually displays the schedule for any given date. So this is what the template looks like. And uh, we're going to go over to the blocks editor now, and I'm going to just show you what happens for one particular sequence here. So let's say that the user uh, decides to change the date on this schedule from the date that's currently displayed to some other date. So a date picker is going to come up here and they can uh, select any date they want. So let's say they pick August 12th or some other date like that. You can see that the fusion tables are start to crank right away. Let's look at the, the flow of the action here inside App Inventor. So uh, the main block that gets triggered is that when date picker, uh, after the date gets changed, this is the event that happens. So what I do is uh, I take the date that was selected in the date picker, I, I, I take the three pieces, 
I join them together to create a new global date variable. Okay? I clear out the old schedule, and then uh, the next key piece of code is that the fusion table is queried uh, to get some information. Specifically, we're looking for the information that's going to sit inside this uh, this day block here, and also any modifier that might uh, uh, might be added in the database. So uh, let's look now at how this works: this load day code and modifier. Uh, right here, we have the uh, procedure call for that, and we can see that we're calling the uh, fusion table here, and uh, we have the ID stored, and the ID of the fusion table uh, can be found uh, if you go to any fusion table like this. If you just go to File. Uh, about this table you can see that the ID is uh, stored right here and that's uh, basically what's used uh, to initialize this uh, global constant right here and here we're telling the fusion table what uh, what columns we want returned so here I want the day of week that fills in the Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday part here right here the day code which tells us A through F or in this case it's a dash which uh, basically suggests there's no school on that date uh, a day modifier, for example, here normally it says normal schedule, but it might be a half day or perhaps a delay due to weather or something like that. And then notes, importantly, are notes that we want to tell the student for this particular day. And here we specify the condition. We only want the database to return one single row, and so we want it to match the date. So uh, looking at here, we want to uh, match the date in the uh, database with the date that we're searching for. So we want to basically say only return uh, this row of information. So in here uh, we do that by uh, setting the date equals and then setting it to our global date. All right. Now when this information returns, which is an asynchronous event inside uh, App Inventor 2, it's going to trigger this large block right here, this event, so it says got result. And this first large chunk of code is basically error checking to make sure that uh, there's been no error received when the information has come back. And this else clause uh, basically runs most of the time when uh, no error has taken place and the, uh, the getting of the data from the fusion table has been successful. And what happens here is that the result is picked apart using list processing and each piece of information is loaded into a different text field in here. Here, for example, the day of week uh, text field, which is right here, uh, is being loaded from the day of week that was returned by the database. And here the letter day, which is this uh, field right here, is being loaded from the next element in the, the return, return value. So this gives you a pretty good idea of how uh, the information is queried from the various uh, databases and uh, used by the app. Lastly, I've provided a separate YouTube video that describes how the security is done between this app and the Google Fusion tables.